All right, folks, welcome back. So the question this round relies solely in some work here in Photoshop. And we're going to come back to our infamous Empire State Building image. Let's go ahead and open that up in Photoshop here real quick. So the questions that came up this round, and these can kind of both be answered pretty quickly here in the same demo, is one person wanted to know, OK, since our assignment is black and white plus one spot color, how can I maybe do that or mimic that in Photoshop by itself before I bring the photo in? We'll address that. The other part of this question was, how do I apply a photo effect to only one specific layer in Photoshop? And we're going to run through that real quick because it's actually fairly easy. Both questions can be answered pretty much solely within the use of the layers palette. So if you don't have your layers palette open, make sure it is. If you can't find it, as always, all the palettes are underneath the window menu should be listed there towards the middle. Again, alphabetized, find layers. Let's bring it out to play. So to show you what I'm walking through here real quick, I want to go ahead and double click the original image file and lay, label it as Empire One. We'll just leave it at that. And I would say, as always, image-wise, leave it in RGB. Again, we can always save this as a PSD file. After you save out that final TIFF file, flatten TIFF file to put in your print deliverable of choice, then that TIFF file convert that to CMYK. But at this point, let's leave it just as RGB. That'll also keep your file size a little smaller, a little more manageable. So leaving it as such, I want to duplicate this layer really quickly. Uh, a couple instances of easy ways to do it. As with all Adobe products, there's a million ways to do the same thing. It's up to you. Uh, with the layer selected, I could always click down on the new layer icon at the bottom of... Oops, maybe not. My bad. What I meant to say. <laughs> Strike that reverse. Right-click the layer, and there's an option near the top that should say Duplicate Layer. It'll say, are you, you know, it again will give you an option of, do you want to just call it Copy? Do you want to rename it? Which I'll name it too. Another qu very quick instance for those that like quick keys, when I have the layer selected, just hit, hold down Command and hit the J key, and it'll duplicate layers all day long, really fast. But I don't need this many instances of the Empire State Building, so I'm going to shift select all of those and delete them. Yes, please. And now I've got these two instances of the layer. Other really helpful icons that are here in the Layers palette. Sure, just as you saw, I can hit the trash can to delete a layer. I can click on the new page icon to create a new layer. I can create folders to organize layers into groups, especially when you get to those tens and hundreds of layer type files. This becomes very handy. Um, but there's two more options I'd like to really call out. One of them, obviously, is the FX options, which someone had asked about before. These can be applied directly to layers. They oftentimes create their own separate layer. And the more important one, which we're going to look at here real quick, are the adjustment layers, which is this little circle that looks like yin-yang, black and white. I can go ahead and click on that. And surprise, surprise, within this whole list right away is an option for black and white. So what happens here is that even though I'm working in an RGB file, the minute I select this, let's go ahead and do it, it gives the appearance that now the photo is black and white. And you'll see, as soon as I had selected that, it added a new layer up here, appropriately labeled, ta-da, black and white. And it's, you know, I can turn its visibility on and off by clicking on the eye. Oop, get a little bit of lag time there, sorry about that. Um, but you can tell the original photos are still below in their full glorious color. But when I activate the visibility of this adjustment layer, it looks black and white. You'll also notice, as soon as I added this black and white adjustment layer, automatically the properties palette popped up. And we're going to talk about this more specifically in a minute, but don't close it because we're going to need it. So I've got my layers palette. I've applied this black and white layer. As always, the way Photoshop works, in case you're not remembering, in the layers palette, the higher it is up on the list of layer items, the more towards the front of the screen the element appears. So even though there's not a physical black and white layer that's here other than what's listed in the layers palette, it's in the front, so it's affecting all the artwork beneath it on the list. So even if I click on Empire 2 and using the Move Tool arrow from over here and move the photo, you can see both Empire 2, the one I'm moving, and Empire 1, 
the very original photo are both being affected by this black and white. Well, but let's say I only want it to affect the actual Empire 2 layer, so I can move this guy back real quick. Very easy, and this is part of that question of how do I apply a photo effect to just a specific layer. So what I can do at this point is go ahead and click on the black and white layer and just right click on it. So when I hit the right click on my mouse, I can then see an option for create clipping mask. And now as soon as I select this, you're going to notice that visually nothing really changed out here on the artboard. But in the layer itself, all the information of this adjustment layer scooted slightly to the right and there's this little tiny arrow that suddenly appeared and is pointed down. And what that's telling me is this instance of this adjustment layer is affecting only the immediate layer beneath it on the list. So now, if I go ahead and click back on Empire 2, make sure my Move tool is selected, and I move this photo, oh, look at that. You can tell the effect, yeah, I know, I said it. You can tell the effect is only being applied to that instance of the Empire 2 layer, whereas the original Empire 1 is still in all its glorious color at that lowest level, not being affected by that adjustment layer. Now I can always go ahead and take it back off, and that's very easy, easily done, where again, select the layer, right click it, and let's release the clipping mask. And now once again, black and white is just blanket statement over everything that's below it on the layers palette. But I'm going to go ahead and readjust it and put it back on just Empire 2. Oops. And let me select that and move this back to the front for a second. And you can add as many instances as you want to a single layer. I can go ahead and even though I've got Empire selected or even whether I have black and white one adjusted, I can go back down here, add another instance of black and white, and in CS6, it does not tend to adjust it or assign it right away. Creative Cloud, it does tend to link it right in to the list. If it doesn't, that's okay. Again, you already know. Have that layer highlighted. Right-click it. Create Clipping Mask. And you see it now becomes part of this downward pointing chain to that first real layer below all the affected versions. So that is the answer to the one question of how do I apply a specific effect to only one specific layer, it's through that right-clicking create clipping mask option and then you can always release it at any point. One special thing to note here in the menu, layers is giving you a whole lot of information. And we're going to adjust the fact that when it says clipping mask, it's showing this white rectangle that is the clipping mask. It's also showing me the information that's what is this adjustment layer about? Since it's showing me again this little half black and white type silhouette that's telling me it's a black and white layer. So here's the kicker of why I created two of these. One of them I want to leave solely as black and white to give that impression that this is black and white photo. But I would like to play with one single color for a moment. So what you're going to notice is now that I'm, I have black and white 2 selected, now let's look over to the right at that properties palette. Yep, there's plenty of sliders here. Most of these you don't really have to worry about this round. But you should notice an option that says Tint. And if I go ahead and select that Tint button, you'll notice, whoa, hey, now there's a second color. Um, by default, it tends to offer this, you know, the old age um, beige kind of tone image. But next to the word Tint is this little, little color block. If you go ahead and click on that, it brings up the color picker as always. And I can go ahead and select a single kind of color to kind of play with. And you'll notice as I keep clicking around on the, the colors that I'm picking from, let's go for a purpley goodness, um, the color I pick, both new versus current, also shows up over here in the properties palette. So that's telling me, and I can keep going back to change this color all day long. That's totally up to you. But I can hit OK, and there's the tint of now this uh, purple-violet color on top of my black and white. So even if I turn off the visibility of the purple, the black and white layer is still down below. And that's something you could play with. Again, this is a real quick, easy way. What I would say is if you're done at this point and are happy with the purple going through there, um, you can still adjust its opacity as well. You know, maybe I like the purple, but 
maybe it's making things a little too muddy and I want to lighten it up just a little bit without picking a different purple, you can play with the opacity of that layer. And again, it's only affecting that layer at that time, but for the moment, I'm going to max out at 100 and let's get some color in here. So, purple over gray. But let's say maybe I want to keep part of the photo black and white and only part of it I want to be purple. So in this instance, this is where this infamous clipping mask that you created comes in handy. These little rectangles that appear to the side are in solid white. And what that's telling me is the size of the clipping mask is the entire canvas. This whole big artboard is showing this instance of the purple tinted black and white on it. But what I could do at this point is you'll notice this little chain link element that's connecting both the actual adjustment item itself, in this case black and white, to the clipping mask. So what I would say is unclick that chain. And you notice it just, you click on it, goes away. Now anything I do can be solely affected. And you'll see things swap out over in the properties palette depending on which element I click. You'll notice these four little brackets show up around the corners. When I have it on the, the mask itself, the four corners are on that. When I click on the properties element itself, the purple, everything changes. But let's say we want to go ahead and just apply the purple to everything but the Empire State Building. And I'm just going to do this really quick down and dirty with the uh, good old polygonal lasso tool. I'll click on that. And what I can do, again, make sure my layer is highlighted. Make sure the brackets are around the mask shape. And let's go ahead and just simply through good use of shift key to give me some straight away and of course some quick rough angles and I told you this is just quick down and dirty I'm trying to get this through on the demo really fast and we're back now I have this area highlighted by simply tapping the delete key on the keyboard boom you'll notice the same silhouette suddenly appears really tiny in the middle of that actual um, uh, forget the name for a second clipping mask element so now what it's trying to tell me is everywhere that it's white inside there is where the effect is being applied but everywhere there's black it doesn't apply it's showing through to the next effect which is the black and white layer make sense so that's one way you can kind of play around with that. As always, what I would typically recommend, zooming in much closer, with this layer still selected, I can always go back in and keep deleting a few extra pieces of noise. You know, and again, select, hit the delete key. Um, because you're going to be working with much higher res images, a final detail I might recommend is if you were to KO something like this out of a colored background, I might get in a whole lot closer to zoom in. And instead of it looking like total clip art of this purple edge on the final print, it's always good to go back over to the toolkit and find the blur tool, which depending on whether you're in CS5 or 6 or Creative Cloud, um, very likely the top tool that'll be showing might be the blur tool, which looks like this little teardrop thing, or it might be the sharpen tool. Those are still sharing the same instance on here. Just make sure you select the blur tool. And as you hopefully already know, but in case you don't, if you look at the keyboard, right above the return key, there's those two brackets, the left bracket and the right bracket. Right bracket makes the brush size go bigger by increments of 10. Left bracket makes it go down smaller by increments of 10. You just keep tapping the same and you can adjust the size. The biggest thing I would watch out for is up under the brush option that when you click on up here at the very top level that the hardness is set to zero we don't want this to be a hard brush or a hard blur at all so i might adjust it so it's just you know pretty close to relative size and just do a quick pass of clicking and dragging along that edge of where color meets black and white i might use the space bar to keep moving if I tap spacebar, I can scoot the canvas up. But I would just keep running along that edge a little bit just to soften it up optically. And that way, when we get to printing time, 
it's not going to look so much like a colored film chop between where you do have color and where you don't. And visually on screen, it's not going to look like it's doing much, nor should it. If you see it really blurring a whole lot, you're doing too much pressure at that point, especially for those that might be using a Wacom tablet. But for this instance, I'm even just using mouse and clicker to do this. But you'll notice it kind of helps soften that edge of where black and white meets color. And even if I look at this at size, it's looking a little less choppy already, and that's what I want. I don't really want the choppy unless, okay, yes, it's your concept, but for the most part, you're probably not going to want to have that happen. So here in this instance, I've got that working. You can also, let's just say for kicks, to do this as a sidebar, let's say this wasn't this specific project, but I wanted to show some color through there too. I can always, again, deselect the chain, make sure my brackets are not around the actual adjustment setting, but the, the uh, clipping mask, I could even take a selection tool and highlight through there and delete. And in this instance, of course, it's not going to show because I need to do that up here on the black and white too. Whoops. One more. There we go. And you can start to see how multiple things could be affected on a photo pretty quickly. And it's all just being used in the layers palette. There's nothing fancy, no special tricks. It's just playing with a few of the adjustment layers, possibly effects, but it's adding or subtracting elements to certain layers. So I'm just going to go backwards in the history palette for a second. I don't quite want to have the color in there just yet. All right, there we go. And for those that like quick keys, Command, Option, and Z, if you keep tapping that, would also take us backwards. Let me show you real quick. I'll jump back to the most recent move. But now by holding down Command, Option, and tapping the Z key, it keeps going back step by step through that same history as well. So a nice little quick key tri trick for you. So there you go. That's the easy way, again, of applying a photo effect to a specific layer only, and also ways to kind of color in and chop or apply color in different ways, but it's always about affecting those clipping masks. When we're done and we're ready to go with this photo, as always, I would hit save first, just plain save. I would not save it as a TIFF, save it as a PSD file. That way we always have a copy of this working file and I can save it right to the desktop. Yes, I want the layers to be kept. Hit save and yes, maximize compatibility. That's my first save. And that way if anything I decide to change later, I can always go back and keep adjusting all these layers. Now that I have a PSD version, yep, you bet. Let's go ahead and do a file, save as, or command shift S for those that like quick keys. Now let's go ahead and save out a TIFF file from this PSD. I'm going to deselect layers because again I just want one flat TIFF file. I want it to be able to print faster. I don't want the printer to have to process all these different layers. It's just slowing things down. So I'm saving as a TIFF with no layers. Hit save. Um, I do have another TIFF already on there from that black and white previous demo but I'm just going to replace it because I don't need that anymore. And all the default options should be there. The discard layers should be selected. Hit OK. And now at this point, yep, let's close our PSD file. I'm going to open, Command O, go back to that TIFF file I just saved, hit open, and now with absolute certainty, let's convert this to CMYK. It's converted. Let's go ahead and hit Command S for save. We can close it. And yeah, you'll notice that violet hue got a little bit darker. That's the nature of RGB versus CMYK. So make sure you're really keeping an eye on those colors. Test printing is always important. Typically, if a color is super saturated, you know, almost neon hot color in RGB, it's going to dull when we convert it to CMYK. But we have to do it because that's what kind of printers it's coming out of. If you try to send RGB through a CMYK, the color shift might be quite unsettling. <laughs> or it might be a great effect. I don't know. But that's where... Our the color testing of printing comes in so handy, you got to do it. So we've converted to CMYK, I've saved it, I can close it, huzzah, we're done. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.